Hello and welcome to this week's edition of CTN Community Update. A former Coon Rapids City Council member's quick actions are being credited with saving a co-worker's life. The incident happened back in early February at the Midwest Disability Law Firm on Northdale Boulevard. 29-year-old Tanitha Johnson went into sudden cardiac arrest and collapsed. Coworker Denise Clint recognized what was happening and sprang into action, starting chest compressions until first responders arrived. On Tuesday night, Clint was presented with a Citizens Award of Merit. She, along with other council members, received training a little over two years ago as part of the Coon Rapids Heart Safe program. Police Chief Brad Wise calls the save a miracle. She later learned from doctors that her heart stopped due to untreated high blood pressure. If not for the immediate life-saving efforts of Mrs. Clint, there would have been a very different outcome. And in fact, the people who recognize this outcome are here with her. Uh, Tanitha brought a number of her family members and imagine what would be different today had Denise Clint not made this intervention. The first responders who took over at the scene were also recognized with a special heart safe coin for saving a life. Also at Tuesday night city council meeting, a construction worker from Elk River received a citizen's award of merit. Toma Kraft helped save the life of a 55 year old woman who was choking at a Coon Rapids restaurant back on February 17th by performing the Heimlich maneuver. Coon Rapids officially has two new career firefighters this week. I, Joe Gottwald. I, Joe Gottwald. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. The two newest full-time members of the Coon Rapids Fire Department were sworn in by Mayor Jerry Cook during Tuesday night's city council meeting. Joe Gottwalt grew up in Ramsey and graduated from Anoka High School. He's been a paid on-call member of the fire department since 2012 and a paramedic with Alina since 2013. The other new full-time firefighter is Joe Eisenshank. He grew up in Andover and has been a paid on-call firefighter since 2013. He's married with two children. Congratulations to both men. It's not a topic many people like to discuss, death, but the issue was front and center this week at a special event held at Faith Lutheran Church. Dozens of people turned out for the conversation on living and dying well. The convenings is based on a series of broadcast conversations that Minnesota Public Radio host Kathy Werzer had with University of St. Thomas Dean Bruce Kramer, who died in 2015 after living with ALS. You know, at first, when the idea was brought to Minnesota Public Radio to have this series of conversations with a man who was dying of ALS, frankly, there were some people in the newsroom that weren't too sure that this would be really great morning radio fodder to hear from a man who had a terminal illness. But as Bruce said, it really, our discussions were not about the dying, it was about the living. Kathy Werzer moderated Tuesday night's discussion that included special guests and performances. This is the third convenings event held across the state. For more information, log on to the website on your screen. We also have a link on our website. CTN recorded the entire discussion on Tuesday night. Look for it in the coming weeks right here on CTN. A Coon Rapids High School senior is raising money for cancer research in a very unique way. CTN's Jordan Rylance explains how the Purple Potty Project is making a difference in Anoka County. Honestly, I woke up on a Saturday morning. My mom came in my room and says, why is there a toilet in our yard? It's called the Purple Potty Project. Looks nice, right? And it's spearheaded by a 17-year-old high school senior. It's actually a project that I would see around when I was a younger girl. So when I was young, my dad was actually diagnosed with cancer. And so that was how I was kind of thrown into the American Cancer Society. There's all these crazy different ways to try to raise money. And the toilet was something that always stood out to me. Last year, the Purple Potty Project made 45 stops around Anoka County and raised over $3,000 for the American Cancer Society and the Children's Miracle Network. Once the Purple Potty has been placed at a location, there are four ways to get rid of it. For $10, we'll take it away from your yard. You don't have to worry about it again. For $20, you can send it to your friend. And for $30, you can send it to your friend, and then you also get purple potty insurance, which is pretty important because let's say you send it to your best friend, well, they might send it right back to you. So you might end up having to pay for it twice. And for $40, we have the Golden Throne Hall of Fame is what we call it. So for $40, you actually get your name printed on the back of the, the toilet so that everyone else who gets it gets to see your name on the back too. As the Purple Potty Project gains attention through social media, DECA students are able to gain real-world experience while making a difference in their community. I wasn't necessarily surprised at how successful it was, but at the same time, it was, 
was surprising to see just how the numbers, when the numbers came in and what she actually was able to raise and all that, it was awesome to see the participation. For CTN Community Update, I'm Jordan Rylance. This year, the Purple Potty Project hopes to raise $5,000 from the American Cancer Society and the Children's Miracle Network. Both homes and local businesses are invited to participate in the project. Getting around one portion of Coon Rapids is a bit more challenging this week after the closure of a major roadway. On Tuesday, Anoka County shut down Foley Boulevard between Egret Boulevard and Northdale Boulevard for the next four months. Motorists have complained about the condition of the road for several months now, which has been under reconstruction since last year. Foley Boulevard is expected to reopen on July 1st. However, it remains open to local residents and businesses in the area. Construction is underway on a road improvement project to our north. Bunker Lake Boulevard is being reconstructed between Crane Street in Andover and Van Buren Street in Ham Lake. The existing two-lane roadway will be reconstructed into a four-lane divided roadway with a center median. Safety will also be improved for bicyclists and pedestrians along the 2.3-mile stretch. The work should be finished sometime in November. We're now just three months away from the opening of a big summer attraction that will be getting a few improvements this season. In all, improvements at Bunker Beach total $85,000 and include upgrades to the Tidal Wave restrooms, painting of the wave pool, new shade shelter screening around the wave pool, and other miscellaneous items. Most of the work will take place before Bunker Beach opens for the season on June 9th. However, refurbishment of the Twisted Tower slides won't start until after Labor Day. The third concert in the Dessert and Coffee Concert Series took the stage in the Civic Center Thursday night. The Minneapolis Commodores performed for the crowd gathered for the concert, sponsored by the Coon Rapids Arts Commission. The 85-plus member band sings a cappella harmony in four-part barbershop style. One concert remains in the series, the Backyard Band, which plays variety music, performs on April 6th. That's going to bring it to the end of today's show. Before we go, we want to remind you, don't forget to spring those clocks forward one hour this weekend when you go to bed Saturday night. And also the fire department reminds you to change the batteries in your smoke detectors. Thanks for watching this week. We'll see you back here again next week.